Hi, this is lesson 2.2, page 62, solving linear inequalities using addition or subtraction. In this lesson, you will learn how to solve an inequality using addition. You will also learn how to solve an inequality using subtraction. And you will learn how to use an inequality to solve a real life problem. Let's talk about solving inequalities using addition. Just as you use the properties of equality to produce equivalent equations, you can use the properties of inequality to produce equivalent inequalities. Equivalent inequalities are inequalities that have the same solutions. So this part in blue might be confusing. This is what they're trying to say. You use the addition property of equality to solve a basic equation like this back in chapter one. You learned that if I add three to each side that I would get an equivalent equation. What they are telling you in blue is the same principle works for inequalities. When you use the addition property of inequality as long as you add the same amount to each side of an inequality, you will create an equivalent inequality. I would definitely get this in my notes, equivalent inequalities and what they are. Let's look at this property. So look at what we have here. Negative 3 is less than 2. I think you would all agree with that. If I add the same amount to each side, I get an equivalent inequality, and it's still true. One is definitely less than six. So adding the same amount gave me an equivalent inequality. Or here's another example. Negative three is greater than or equal to negative ten. That's true. It's far, negative three is farther right on my number line. If I add three to each side, I still get a true statement. Zero is definitely greater than or equal to negative seven. Zero is definitely bigger than negative seven. So if I add the same thing to each side, I will produce an equivalent inequality. Let's solve an inequality using addition. Like look at this sample. We're going to solve x minus six is greater than or equal negative ten. So first of all, write the inequality on your paper. We're going to use the addition property of inequality. We will add 6 to each side to get rid of the minus 6. So it's the same thing as the onion stuff you learned all in chapter 1. The minus 6 plus 6 cancels, and you're left with x greater than equal negative 4. Now we're going to graph our solution. Now remember, the reason we graph, it's not me trying to make things difficult. It's because... If I told you to go home tonight and write down all the answers to this, you would never get the problem done. It would take you forever. So we quickly draw a picture. And I'll even give you the number line paper. We're going to put a closed circle at negative 4, and we're shading right because x is the numbers that are equal to or bigger than negative 4. I would like you to pause the video now, and you try these three. Okay, you're back. What you should have done in question one is to get rid of minus two and to isolate b, you add two to each side. b would be greater than negative seven. In two, to get rid of minus three, you'd add three. m is less than equal eight. And in three, to get rid of the minus quarter, you'd add a quarter. Let me make sure that we're clear here. One quarter plus one quarter is two quarters, and I simplified that to a half. A half is greater than y. So again, we graph our answers because it would be impossible for me to write these all out. So on the next screen, I graph them. Here is b greater than negative 7. Open circle at negative 7, shading right. Here is m less than equal 8. Close circle at 8, shading left. And finally, one half is greater than y. So let's think about it. If half is greater than y, that means y would be less than half. Here's a picture of all the y values going left, less than half. 
Let's talk about solving inequalities using subtraction. What, similarly to what I just showed you, there's a subtraction property of inequality. If you subtract the same number from each side of an inequality, you will produce an equivalent inequality. So very similar to what we just talked about. Here's two examples. Negative 3 is less than equal 1. That's true. If I take away 5 from each side, I would get negative 8 is less than equal negative 4. That is also true. It's equivalent. Negative 8 is definitely farther left on a number line than negative 4. Or 7 greater than negative 20. If I take away 7 from each side, for example, I would get an equivalent inequality. That's true. 0 is greater than negative 27. That's true. 0 is definitely farther right on the number line than negative 27. I can use this property to solve any equations that, or I misspoke, any inequalities I meant to say that have addition in them. So let's look at that. Let's solve these two inequalities that you see right here on page 63. We'll solve these. Let's do this one first. We want to write the inequality on our paper. I got to get rid of the plus 8, so I'm going to take away 8 from each side, which right away will cancel these. Y would be less than equal negative 3, and then I have to graph that. Here's a closed circle at negative 3, and I'm shading left. For the next question, write the problem. Negative 8 is less than 1.4 plus m. I have to get rid of the 1.4, so I'm subtracting it from each side. That 1.4 minus 1.4 cancel. And I'm left with m greater than negative 9.4, or I'll speak it, I guess I'll speak it the way it's written. This is 9 point, negative 9.4 is less than m. So think about it. If negative 9.4 is less than m, that means m is bigger than negative 9.4. So when I go to graph it, you can see that here. Open circle at negative 9.4 and m is bigger. We're shading right. Why don't you pause the video and try these three now? Okay, I'm back. So on this first equation, or inequality, I should say, I got to get rid of plus 5, so I subtracted 5. K is less than or equal to negative 8. In the second problem, I had to get Z isolated on the right, so I took away 1 6, and I, maybe I should highlight this. I took away a 6. Well, 5 6 minus 1 6 is 4 6, but we should reduce that. That's 2 thirds. That's why you see 2 thirds here. 2 thirds is less than or equal to Z. And this final inequality, I got to get P by itself. I'll take away 0.7 from each side. P is greater than negative 3. And then I have to graph these. They asked me to graph the solution. So for this first one, K is less than or equal negative 8. I have a closed circle at negative 8, and I'm shading left. For the second problem, 2 thirds is less than or equal to Z. So think about that. If 2 thirds is less than z, z would be greater. So I have a closed circle at 2 thirds, and I'm shading right. I'm greater than that. And for the final question, p greater than negative 3, I have an open circle at negative 3, and I want the graders. I'm shading right. The last part, solving real life problems, modeling with mathematics. Here's the question. It says, <coughs> a circuit overloads at 1,800 watts of electricity. You plug a microwave oven that uses 1,100 watts of electricity into the circuit. Here's the first thing. Write and solve an inequality that represents how many watts you can add to the circuit without overloading it. So we've got to understand the problem. You know the microwave oven is using 1,100 watts. But the total use that we can have is 1,800. We want to write and solve an inequality that would um, demonstrate the situation. So let's put it in words. And again, I've been doing this, and the book does the same. Here would be the words. The watts used by the microwave oven plus any additional watts has to be less than 
the total allowed. Okay, now we can put numbers and unknowns in there. How many watts does the microwave oven use? And you can see it here. They wrote in, okay, wait a minute, say 1100. So they wrote that here. We don't know how many additional watts we could use. That's an unknown. They'll put W. What's the overload? Well, it overloads at 1800, so we'll put 1800 here. There's my inequality. 1100 plus unknown equals 1800. Okay, I got to I got to solve this now. I got to get W by itself. So you can see they're going to use the subtraction property of inequality. They will take away 1100 from each side. And what we're finding out is that whatever else we plug into the circuit, it has to be less than 700 watts. Now, part B, in addition to the microwave oven, which of the following appliances could you plug in? Well, we could definitely do the clock radio. That's less than 700. We could definitely do the blender. That's less than 700. We certainly can't do the hot plate. That's not less than 700. And we definitely can't have the toaster in there either. That's not less than 700. So that's, again, how we could write a real-life inequality to model a situation and then use it to solve it. I'm going to stop the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.